Dear Austin, Hi, it's me. Now I know the last time I responded to you, I may have sounded a little bit tilted, but I was really happy you took the time to watch my video about the portal gun. As a resident scientist on YouTube and an enjoyer of Valve video games, it's no surprise I got a little passionate about it. But that was during the sleepless days of writing my master's thesis before I became a full-time engineer. And on the topic of said thesis would be the discussion of a heavily requested topic, the sister weapon of the portal gun, the gravity gun from Half-Life 2. I noticed you also covered this one before, talking about the wacky wave realm of gravity from its basic definition and how it's applied. Having watched the video, I really don't have too much to say. Nothing of concern about your explanation. It's a great entry-level way to get people interested in science. However, like with the portal gun, I think the key to understanding how this weapon works might be in the name that's officially given in the game. But we'll get into that in a moment. See, with this video right here, I don't want to do a debunking, because not only is the general discussion about gravity fairly based, but I want to really build off of your video. I think this has become my perspective the more I matured and realized it's pretty cringe to talk down to people, especially people who are also passionate about the same things you're passionate about. So don't consider this video a debunking, rather a bedbunking. Just like how bedbunks can't exist without the single bed on the bottom, this video can't exist without your original video to build off of it. So if you need a brief overview of Half-Life 2 or my general thoughts about the game, I'll direct you to this video in the top right corner. What we're here to discuss today is the radical weapon of gravitational gravitas, the gravity gun. This weapon can draw things towards it and shoot them out at speeds much greater than what it pulled in with. There's a ton of forces involved at play in each interaction, but to really feel how realistic or feasible this might be, we need to investigate the namesake of this weapon. You can call it the Zero Point Energy Field Manipulator if you really want to. The gravity gun's official name is the Zero Point Energy Field Manipulator. Naming this weapon the gravity gun is a little misleading considering the forces in effect are not gravitational forces. Like with the quantum tunneling device from Aperture Labs, something quantum mechanical may be going on here. But to understand this, we need to break this down into multiple sections. And the starting point would be point kinetics in the first place. Now my master's thesis was on implementing a one-dimensional point kinetics feature into a physics code for nuclear reactor analysis during potential meltdown scenarios. By looking at specific features of the reactor, one can gauge if it will shut down naturally without human intervention. These features of a reactor can maintain coolant density, the radial expansion of the core, or the Doppler effect of neutron in the reaction. By simplifying the equations down to one dimension, you can roughly describe these complex interactions in an understandable and measurable way. But that is using everything as a single point and the energy associated with those systems. Unfortunately, these methods are unable to describe what we're witnessing with the gravity gun. We'll need to lose another dimension to reach the zero point energy. Now, while you're actually not going to the zeroth dimension, zero point energy is the minimal non-zero energy needed in a quantum mechanical system and explains how light waves are able to travel through the vacuum of space. This is usually calculated using the expected energy of a zero-point photon mode. And so this is when we transfer from the world of Newtonian physics to the quantum field theory and quantum dynamics, the interactions between electrons and photons. This is the conventional way of describing zero-point energy. All fields in the universe have zero-point energy, from force fields like photons and bosons to matter fields like electrons, fermions, and quarks. Even at near or absolute zero, quantum mechanics still dictates that particles have some motion in them, which is contrary to our Newtonian understanding, which would say when you reach absolute zero, your temperature is absolute zero, all motion would cease. And this goes hand in hand with Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, which states that when observing a quantum mechanical state, you can know either the position or the momentum of a particle, but not both at the same time. Now, I've talked about this concept before in a previous video, but the Hamiltonian is the total energy state in terms of operators and wave functions, and can be understood as the sum of the potential and kinetic energy. 
If one were to describe the relationship between the wave functions and an operator, one would do so with eigenvalues and eigenstates. The eigenvalues of a Hamiltonian can be used to describe the energy levels of a system and quantize the values of angular momentum a system can have. By integrating over all the momentum of a particle of that state, the final expected energy in a vacuum state diverges to infinity. This is used just to illustrate that energy is still present even in empty space. Hendrik Casimir, a physicist from the 20th century, was primarily known for his research on two fluid model superconductors, but he also made great strides in understanding what zero point energy is. Studying with Niels Bohr, the namesake of the Bohr atomic model, he worked in Copenhagen and Zurich during the age where much of quantum mechanics was still being discovered. You'll probably run into a couple of his mathematical tricks and shorthands in your college level quantum mechanics courses. His experiment took the models of quantum field theory to a physical representation of forces between two separated conducting plates in a vacuum system. In his experiment, he put two metal plates in a box under vacuum. The two metal plates act as boundary conditions for the wave equations that you'd be familiar with when you're in your quantum mechanics class. You'll see a lot of potential barriers in infinite square wells. He then calculated the electromagnetic vacuum state, or zero photon state, and the energy within the rest of the cube. There's more about quantum tunneling and really interesting things on my portal science video, so revisit that if you need further explanation. Since both energies are divergent, the force between the two plates can be described as F equals pi squared times the reduced Planck's constant h bar times c, the speed of light, divided by 240 times a to the fourth for some separation distance a, all times l squared for some length of the plate l. Now this seems like a really small force, but it proves that the zero point energy field, that energy between the two plates, can be manipulated. There is one major caveat, of course, which is that the force drops off significantly as the distance between the plates increase. This Casimir mechanism is incredibly interesting and is what we used in the Black Ops 1 Ascension Easter Egg. And while NASA is using this equation to try and figure out how to generate thrust without fuel for space exploration, I'm here to apply these scientific concepts to a weapon of a nuclear physicist stopping an alien invasion. Like with the portal gun, we're facing the problem of the conditions for such a device to work in. Of course, we're not in Aperture Labs anymore, where the conditions can be tailor-made for each experiment. We're in City 17 and the Citadel, so we're typically not under vacuum. Because in the real world, it's currently under discussion how we could apply this to nano and micro technology. So, Austin, the forces that you described in your video are from a classical perspective of the gravity gun, but it seems like Alex, Eli, and the creators of this weapon wanted us to consider the quantum mechanical side. Since the gravity gun has two types of fire, do either describe the macro scale of what we're seeing. The primary fire is the blast that you covered in your video that punts anything the user targets with tremendous force. That description is more fitting for what you covered about gravity in general. The secondary fire, however, is what I'm more interested interested in, the one that holds an object in front of you, that attractive force that can be used to pick up lighter objects on the map. I believe we're observing some Casimir effect between the prongs of the gun, but could this wicked Casimir effect really be able to defy gravity? Quite honestly, it depends on what the input potential energy source is, which determines the Hamiltonian of the system. While we're talking about subatomic particles, the forces they're experiencing is quite low and not scalable. But something as volatile as a Zen crystal powering this device, well now we're getting into the realm of reasonable science fiction. When we're considering things that seem to defy gravity, we have a long-range attractive force that already exists between neutral atoms and molecules, the van der Waals force. These allow geckos to climb and water drops to hang off the ceilings. But in the 1930s, the theories used to describe the van der Waals forces were not sound for colloidal solutions, viscous materials like paint or mayonnaise. It was only through the realization that the interaction between two neutral molecules only works when you consider that light travels at a finite speed. 
three times 10 to the eight meters per second. One thing to consider is that all fields, even vacuum fields, have some types of fluctuations in them. Fluctuations in a vacuum field are approximately half the energy of a photon traveling through it. What's really interesting about the Casimir effect is that there's a bit of excitement about how this will fit into a large extra dimensional unified field theory of fundamental forces. These dimensions would have the potential to modify classical Newtonian gravitation at a sub millimeter difference. If the gravity gun could extrapolate that to a macro level, then we have something that actually works. One important thing to note is that in the realm of electromagnetic fields, every field, even in a vacuum, can carry energy. This is the idea of field radiation pressure. As electromagnetic fields propagate, they can put some pressure on surfaces. This pressure increases energy, increasing the frequency of the electromagnetic field. And to tie this back into the resonance cascade video, there's a certain cavity where the resonance frequency is greater than the force outside the two plates in the Casimir experiments, which which causes the repulsion. One thing I am hesitant about though, as I made in my last video about the science of the resonance cascade, is the idea that the supergravity gun is a dark energy field manipulator. I've made my feelings about the questionability of dark matter and dark energy very clear. I personally don't find it or things like negative mass very compelling. That's because I've tried to make clear with this series of science videos, even small evidence for the Casimir effect or quantum tunneling that we can observe are at least observable and better than no evidence, which is just filled in by sus mathematical proofs. In my opinion, the supercharged gravity gun just ups the potential energy, making the Hamiltonian even greater. The force needed to hold up any of these objects is variable by Newton's third law, equal and opposite reactions and such. But the Casimir effect is the way the gun is able to hold up an object. And the game devs, well, they weren't lying to you to make the physics simpler, but I kind of just misbranded this one. But here I am, like the maid, I just gotta clean up this mess every time, you know, someone makes a video, I gotta like iron it out and make sure everyone understands the science. And you know what? You probably didn't understand the science. 90% of the stuff is pretty high level. You gotta go up to senior year at least to really get into a little bit of this stuff. But if it didn't make sense to you, that's okay. That's what I'm here for and I love what I do. Sincerely, the Shockmeister. P.S. Valve just announced Half-Life 3 already. The anticipation is killing me. Thank you so much for watching. This video was definitely a lot of fun to research and create. If you want to see more science videos in the future, whether they be my own ideas, debunking or bed bunking someone else's video, please leave it in the comments down below. This year is looking to be really fantastic for video projects and I'm so excited about the direction of my channel going forward. I'm glad I'm able to make videos and not really care whether they do well or not because I have an industry job and I'm doing really cool science and engineering every day. Thank you so much for watching. God bless and I'll I'll see you all next time.